Hello InfoPerson, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing one of the most incredible and one of the most detailed detections of a very distant planet that seems to be extremely Jupiter-like, both in its mass and its location in the star system, but also is extremely far away, 17,000 light years away from us, making this one of the most distant planets ever found in our galaxy, and in this case found using a method known as microlensing. And because this planet was discovered using all of the data from the Kepler telescope that's no longer operational, it makes this detection incredible for many different reasons. So let's talk a little bit more about the study you see right here and can find in a description below, but let's start with the idea of microlensing. The idea that's based on Einsteinian principles of gravitational lens. And although unofficially Einstein proposed gravitational lenses back in 1912, the first official publication in regards to gravitational lenses was done by Orest Kvolson, the not so well known Russian Jewish physicist who made the initial publications about this particular topic. But it's really the iconic Fritz Zwicky, the Swiss astronomer who's also considered to be the father of dark matter who back in 1937 proposed that, well, a typical gravitational lens, in theory, could allow various galactic clusters to act as a kind of a magnifier similar to how a telescope works, with a specific focus being on various galactic clusters, with the official confirmation finally being made in 1979 when a team of scientists discovered this. This is known as the Twin Quasar. And you can kind of see that it seems to be an object that seems to have a mirror image. That particular mirror image is created through a gravitational lens. But as various physicists started to explore this idea further, they also realized that in theory, you can also have an effect known as microlensing. Essentially, a slightly smaller phenomenon when, for example, a massive object passes in front of a star for just some time, not for a long period of time. With the first such object officially confirmed in 1989. But these effects would be pretty rare. For a typical star, if we're looking at a typical star from planet Earth, it might actually take millions of years for it to pass in front of another star and experience a microlensing effect. But because there are so many stars out there, at some point at least one of them is going to pass in front of the other and thus we'll be able to see the microlensing that should generally appear somewhat similar to what you see right there. And if it has two peaks, it means that it has a partner, possibly another star, possibly another planet. And so in the last few decades, the scientists exploring this effect realized that the shape of the curve determines a lot of things. As a matter of fact, by looking at the shape of the curve, they can generally establish a lot of different parameters about this particular star system. Because depending on the angle of observation, depending on the mass of the star and the planet, and even depending on the actual inclination of the planet to the star, the curve will change quite dramatically with the most simple, most basic gravitational microlensing event sort of looking like this, just one single spike. And in this case, this could be either some kind of a star or usually some kind of a rogue planet, with a more complex system naturally creating much more complex curves and creating something that we can then analyze, discovering pretty much everything about the system that passed in front of a star. But all of these events were normally found using various telescopes here on planet Earth. As a matter of fact, one of the most prolific such programs is the Polish astronomical project known as OGLE. You can find a little bit more about this in the description below. The project has been running for pretty much three decades now and was able to discover quite a lot of different planets and even a lot of different other objects as well. But the detection we're talking about today was actually done with a space telescope which added an additional benefit of the telescope being really far away from planet Earth, which, when combined with the data from planet Earth, allowed the scientists to even triangulate exactly where this particular star system was located in the night skies. And that's actually for a very simple reason. Kepler telescope, being a space telescope, orbits around the Sun, and actually has a really, really interesting orbit that you see right here. Now at some point, in approximately 51 years after its original launch, it's sort of going to come back closer to planet Earth. But when it discovered this particular object, it was somewhere right here. So it was actually several million kilometers away from planet Earth. And so when the scientists compared the observational data from Kepler telescope to the data from planet Earth, they discovered that Kepler received this data slightly earlier. Basically there was a slight time deviation because of the speed of light. 
which created just enough stellar parallax to be able to pinpoint the location of the planet and the star. And interestingly enough, in some cases, if the microlensing effect is long enough, so basically when a microlensing effect lasts for a few months, because of the changes of orbital parameters of planet Earth around the Sun, the curve changes as well, allowing us to determine even more properties of various systems. Which very recently allowed the scientists to discover an Earth-mass rogue planet and also an actual individual black hole somewhere out there. But I guess in this case this was a little bit different, mostly because by design Kepler telescope was never actually meant to find so-called gravitational lensing effects. The detection itself was somewhat accidental, but because the Kepler telescope was actually looking at the same spot for several months, at some point at least one planetary system passed in front of a different star, which then allowed it to see at least several of these unusual effects. Now back in 2016 the scientists realized that approximately 27 possible objects were discovered this way, with several of them already confirmed to be possible rogue planets we've discussed on the channel in one of the previous videos. But the recent reanalysis of the older data from Kepler telescope determined that at least five of these detections were actually completely new, and one of these detections was extremely interesting. And at first the scientists weren't even sure if what they're seeing here is an actual microlensing effect or if it's just some kind of a data analysis error or potentially some bias. But by using various ground telescopes, they determined that the object is really there because it was also present in a data detected from planet Earth, but unfortunately ignored until now. Ignored of course because there's just way too much data to go through. In this case, five different telescopes on planet Earth also saw something happen here but naturally at different times from Kepler telescope, which then allowed the scientists to work out the exact curve that was detected and what exactly was probably happening in this particular situation. With this video right here sort of showing us what most likely occurred. So the gravitational lens sort of looks like this, with the curve in this case resembling this, a double peak, which when calculated suggested that what we're observing is very likely some kind of a star system at an angle with a relatively massive planet around it. But when doing further calculations, the scientists in this case also realized that this particular planet seems to be eerily Jupiter-like, both in mass and its location around the star system. The planet in this case was approximately 10% more massive than Jupiter and at a distance of about 4.4 astronomical units away from the star. The actual Jupiter is about 5.2 AU away from the star, so extremely similar but not identical. But compared to thousands of other exoplanets discovered to date, this seems to be the most Jupiter-like detection to date. Although in this case it's also extremely far away from us, approximately 17,000 light years away toward the center of the galaxy, placing it extremely close to the center or the bulge of the galaxy itself, not directly in the center but very close to it. Although it's actually not the farthest planet discovered using this method and not even the farthest planet found closer to the center of the galaxy. That record belongs to another planet we discussed a couple of years ago, detected by OGLE and analyzed by scientists in 2020. In this case this was some kind of a super earth very very close to the galactic center. But in this case the strangest part is just the fact that this is a Jupiter mass planet in that particular location. To date there is still no good explanation for how Jupiter actually got to the position where it's at and why not a lot of other star systems seem to have massive Jupiter-like planets in this region. This star system seems to have one. Unfortunately though we're probably never going to see it again simply because of the rarity of these unusual events. Gravitational microlensing is unfortunately super super rare. It will take millions of years of us looking at the night skies before we can see this star and its planet create something similar again. And unfortunately that means that, for now at least, we're probably not going to be able to discover anything else from the star system. But when it comes to gravitational microlensing in general, it's actually only the beginning. In the next decade or so, NASA is going to be releasing at least two different missions, the biggest one being Nancy Grace Roman Telescope, that's essentially going to be specializing in looking for various planets using a lot of unique techniques, including microlensing. And the other mission, known as Euclid, is going to be doing something similar as well, but in this case this is going to be European Space Agency launching the craft. And so chances are, just like with Kepler Telescope, discovering thousands of various planets 
using the transit method, once these two telescopes become operational, we might discover thousands more using gravitational microlensing, and potentially discover some other unexpected phenomena that we can't even imagine just yet. Which means that the next decade is going to be super exciting when it comes to microlensing. And that's of course why you should probably subscribe, because we're going to be talking about all of these detections in a lot of upcoming videos. On that note, check out all of the links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.